question. I don't know if you want to. I think perhaps we could leave it till afterwards. I think yes. Uh, we, have yes. More we have more time for this. Up. We're actually moving more in a direction of linguistics now, um, with a, um, a talk by Sheila uh, Java uh, Guinal, on uh, who's a professor at the um, Ateneo de Davao, uh, and she's going to be talking to us about um, linguistics, about the use of English. So we're drifting more away from literature into linguistics. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my paper is on beautiful English, marginal identities, and dominant positions. Um, through the years, I have noticed that beauty pageants were not studied, uh, studied mainly for anthropology and sociology, but not much on linguistics. And since Davao City has its unique beauty pageant, which, in, which includes the Lumads and the Muslims of Davao City, which is recognized by the city itself. However, um, as what I mentioned, few in beauty pageants language, that's why this paper will focus on the pattern, the structure, the content, and the meanings of the answers in beauty pageants. Uh, this paper will explore the answers of contestants in the Q&A segment to uncover patterns below, within, and above the clause, meanings embedded in the clause, and the various attitudes and positions produced by the clause. Um, the data is the Hiyasa Kadayawan, particularly the pageant on 2012. It is a local beauty pageant organized by Davao City, participated by the selected female representatives of the various recognized Lumads and Muslims. Um, the Lumads are the Ata, the Klata, Jangan, Matigsalog, Ovo Manuvo, Tagabawa. The Muslims are from the Maguindanao, Maranao, Sama, Kagan, Tausug, and Iranuns. Um, the participants are proficient in their mother tongue because they have a unique language of their own. However, during the pageant, they are required to speak about themselves, their tribes and cultures using the English language. The method for this paper is um, via the systemic functional linguistics, but before that, it has to be transcribed because I just downloaded uh, the pageant via YouTube. Only the transcribed text, which is the linguistic aspect, will be analyzed, excluding the other aspects, such as paralanguage, facial expressions, etc. That will not be included. Um, below the clause, I used the nominal analysis by Martin. I, would, I looked into the adjectives, the numerals, the determiners, phrases, and clauses, particularly in the SFL term, diectic, post-diectic, numeratives, epithet, classifier, thing, and qualifier. Within the clause, still under SFL, or systemic functional linguistics, I use transitivity, under which there are six types of processes. This transitivity is actually looking at the verbs. Um, a while ago, the nominal is looking at the noun, the noun parts. Um, under that, we have material, mental, relational, behavioral, verbal, and existential, and other subcategories, nuclear participants, and circumstantial. Below the clause, I'm sorry. Uh, for the attitudes and position, I used the appraisal analysis by Martin and White to look into the attitude. In the SFL, attitude is the system of meanings that maps feelings, which is three semantic regions, the affect from the answers, the judgment from the answers, and the appreciation from the answers of the contestants. Um, th for the results, for the nominal analysis, the dominant finding are, is the qualifiers. Out of the seven functions under the nominal group, this is the most dominant, like 40-something out of 60. Um, these are examples of qualifiers, which is some of them in, in the typical linguistic analysis, we call it prepositional phrases or clauses. But for SFL, we, SFL, we, use, we call it qualifiers. Seven out of the ten contestants employ the most number of qualifiers. Particularly, contestant number two, who is crowned as Hiyasa Kadayawan, employed eight qualifiers in one uh, answer, in one sentence. These qualifiers dominate the genre of beauty pageants. I noticed out of the ten contestants, like on, a, on the average, it's from eight to ten qualifiers per contestant. It dominates the genre of pageant answers, which means that majority of the contestants provide more than one qualifier just to describe one thing. That thing is the noun. It, in that pageant, it comes in a form of an image of a Davao emblem, such as Philippine Eagle, Durian, uh, the Orchid, the Waling Waling. And then they would give eight 
different qualifiers in one answer. Um, for the transitivity, the most dominant result is relational out of the six. The findings of transitivity an analysis show that the most number of processes used by the contestants is relational. These are samples. Out of the two principal relational clause types, identification dominates because there are two types of relational clauses. That's identification and uh, that's identification and attribution. It's identification that's the most dominant, which pinpoints to token and value, which is the main goal in recognizing identification. Uh, at first, the projected images, which are the pictures, are identified literally via the, the, the participants were able to memorize the, the common name, the scientific name of the Philippine Eagle, the Waling Waling, among others, the statistical facts about the city, etc. And according to Thompson, the role of token and value depend on the pre-existing external semantic properties of the two ways of referring to the entity where value is the more, the more generalized and the token is the more specific. So this means that in one image, the contestants tend to tell plenty of basic information about it. And the second, the contestants would expand their answers via non-literal or figurative representations and meanings of the images shown to them. So just compare an eagle after telling the audience about its scientific name, they would start comparing eagle figuratively to their tribe, how brave the eagle is, among others. Um, for the third result, the most dominant is positive appraisal. Remember, appraisal has three regions, affect, judgment, and appreciation. The appraisal analysis of the pageant contestants, particularly the affect, is 100% positive. I mean, not one from the contestants gave negative feelings or emotions. Th those are examples. Uh, this means that not one, contest not one contestant expresses any negative feeling towards any object. The judgment, aside from affect, um, is judging people's character, which differs between personal judgments and moral judgments. Generally, the answers of the contestants are highly positive again, and it shows two, uh, two types of judgments. The moral judgment, such as the example, the contestant number one positively, uh, positively appraises a maiden by judging the maiden's moral character as respectful, because she wears the traditional dress of her tribe. For the personal judgment of admiration, contestant five appraises the Philippine eagle and her tribe Bagobo Clata as great and brave by alluding the character of her tribe to the Philippine eagle. There is a negative judgment on the surface, on the literal level, but if you look at it, it still is positive, such as the, the use of the judgment differences and diverse. Their literal meanings are often associated negatively. However, in these contexts, they only describe what is obviously different and what is obviously diverse. The context actualizes that despite the obvious differences and diversities of culture and traditions, they gather as one community to celebrate a, a festival where everyone is recognized fairly and equally, which I find ironic because um, it tends to recognize every tribe that they are unique, yet they tend to gather together as one, which is, I find it contradicting. And then they have to use a language that they are not proficient of. Under appreciation, which is actually telling values that are given to things, things could also be appreciated positively or negatively. And again, it is generally positive. Nothing. Affect, judgment, and appreciation, they're all positive. However, there is one instance when an image is valued negatively, which is common if you're from Davao, you would know Durian. But in the context, the negative evaluation, the valuation is used to show only the negative side to uplift the positive, such as it looks like hell, smells like hell, but tastes like heaven. It only actually favored the taste. That's why the negative only helped in, in making it a lot better. Um, for my, I, uh, those are only samples because I couldn't give all the 10, all the 10 codings, which I did. But by, 
based on my analysis for functional grammar, which is systemic functional linguistics, qualifiers, which functions as post-modifiers, dominate the nominal results. And these qualifiers are the value generated in the token value in the transitivity analysis. And these token and value are, sub are subsumed under relational processes, which overshadow other types of processes. So uh, the result in the nominal and the result Nominal analysis and transitivity analysis are actually connected. It shows that in beauty pageants, since it's a social event, they're using verbs which are highly inter relational. It tends to establish this relationship between the audience and the speaker. Also, with appraisal, which reveal a highly positive attitude of the contestants, the contestants' affect, judgment, and appreciation of the images and symbols that are related to Davos City are only positive. And on top of that, linguistically, I noticed a pattern of their answers. They tend to f repeat on how to begin and end their answers and somewhere in the middle. Uh, the recurring sets of texts are found within the answers of the pageant contestants and these create a cohering structure which forms obligatory and optional elements forming a structure. Um, this is um, I follow this one from Hassan and Halliday, but I just, the similarity is the carrot indicates a, se a sequence. Um, the, how do we call this? The, the parentheses are optional, may not be used by the contestants. The next may occur, yet may be replaced with other types, and the bracket occurs, yet may be replaced with other kinds. Greetings is optional, followed by a process, the same process, consistent type of process, and then followed by a token, which could be replaced by other type, and then cir circumstance, which is optional, and then there's value, which may occur, but may be replaced with other types. There's closing, which may occur, and may be replaced by other types. And then greeting, which may be optional, and the gratitude, which may occur, yet may be replaced. By looking at that, I realized that they tend to follow what the tradition is by Miss Universe and other types of pageants. They tend to construct their answers according to what the mainstream beauty pageants are actually delivering their answers. And that shows that there's no criticality. That's the next conclusion. This pattern means that the answers of the contestants are merely repeating despite the differences and the similarities in the objects or images presented to them because each contestant was given a different image, yet they tend to say almost the same pattern of answer. Their answers appear the same structurally and the contents are merely generalized, expanded descriptions. And my third conclusion is they have this conforming and uncritical answers. The pattern in the answers of the contestants implies conformity to a culture of answering in beauty pageant Q&As. The highly positive attitudes is indicative of conformity. They tend to satisfy and please the audience and the judges, of course, to win. There's no negative attitude, which is a very safe choice by avoiding being critical. They don't include any political. They don't include any social issue. The evasion reflects the answers, that the answers are only lengthy, sugar-coated clauses, and they seem afraid to be judged as partisans once they become critical of the image or issues related to the image or maybe related to Davos City, which organized the pageant. A projection maybe of the ideal women that you know you have the beautiful inside through their kind and positive thoughts and beautiful outside through their lengthy intelligent sounding answers that's why i was thinking what is beautiful english the contestants translated their answers from their mother tongue um, at first they have to say it in their mother tongue but of course the judges wouldn't understand so they had to deliver that and some of them in, in broken english so that the judges would be able to rate them this conforms to what the society, the audience, the judges, and the organizers expect, to what the society thinks is good, ideal, and beautiful, which qualifies any contestant to win. Hence, the beautiful English controls the hegemony of pageants without 
critical thinking. The contestants in the end succumb to the existing standards of acceptance by complying to the universal notion that beautiful women must be able to present themselves, speaking only kind and positive thoughts while using English despite their linguistic incapacity not to humiliate the tribes they represent. They brave the standards and the hegemony in order to be recognized and accepted. Therefore, their answers during the Q&A show their compliance to the hegemony to gain public approval and recognition. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.